Let me bang you. I do bang. let you bang. I hey, let me bang you, Jesus. Let me bang. Let you bang. Let me bang. Let me bang. Let me bang. Let me bang. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? What's up, people? Welcome to our brand new MMA Roasted podcast. I got a great crew here today. Uh, my man Eric Anders is here. I needed to talk to him with a K and E, as well as Andy Wynn. Uh, Eric, you know Andy Wynn? Uh, uh, people, I don't. I don't think they call her the Crazian, the, the hot Asian sensation. She won her her, her fight last week. Uh, let's get down to it. It's this great show. Okay. It's a great show. First of all, we got to talk to my bad Eric because, uh, uh, by the way, she's uh, not only is she crazy, but she said I can't do the show this week. I said no problem. And then she goes, what am I on? And starts yelling at me on Instagram. Uh, and I'm like. Everybody yells at you, man. I know everybody, how it goes. Everybody yells at me. I go, you said last week. She goes, scroll down, motherfucker. Like, I was like, I was like, <laughs> but it's, it's okay. And then I go, you scroll down. She goes, well, now I can't do next week. So I'm like, all right, just whenever you want to come on, come on the show. I'm happy to have you. Uh, just because, don't hurt me. Because she won her fight in, uh, in a lion fight last week. She looked fucking awesome. Oh, nice. Uh, but Eric, first of all, so you were kicking ass last week all right you had your big fight now you got rocked a little bit a little bit right no no not even a little bit. They, they were saying you might have been hurt were you hurt at all i mean my nose was bleeding but you know you know it is what it is part of the fight i came to get hit and that's what they don't know then you started throwing bombs and then dan uh uh cormier was like oh it's over it's over it's over you just start it was like a I mean, you were throwing fucking haymakers. Were you worried at all about gassing yourself out at all? Not at all. My cardio is tip top. I've been, I'm in the best shape I've ever been. And, uh, yeah, I knew that even if the fight went to the next round, I, I would come out fresh and, you know, yeah. could probably finish the fight. So, you know, I fucked so, up a little bit. Then the guy, has, the guy has his hands down. And it looked like for a set, was it, did you just get, like, in, like, primal mode? Did you, did you think you were lifting him up? Or what? Talk to me. Nah, you know, he was kind of playing that game, up, down, up, down. Uh, so, you know, I'm looking down at his back, and I really can't see him. Man, sometimes you just get in the zone, kind of like in berserker mode. Like, you know, the rap Herb Dean's like, defend yourself. So, you know, the fight's only two or three, four, you know, just a few punches or strikes from, uh, you know, being over with. And I thought he was on the way up, but uh, he wasn't. Now, Herb said he, <laughs> he, he might have baited you. Do you think he baited you? I mean, he was definitely playing the game. You know, if, if you watch that earlier in the fight, you know, he gets in that position, and he gets up, then he gets down, and he puts his hand on the ground. So, man, he was definitely playing the game, too. And, uh, you know, he, I guess he just played a little bit better than I did. Now, you looked. You look ripped. You look like this is the best shape you've been. Did you cut out fat? What, what happened? Um, man, I, I stopped running, actually. You know, I was running like 30 miles a week for eight weeks. You know, previously, my previous fights to get ready for, you know, I want my cardio and, and to, to cut weight, you know. So, um, I probably ran 30 miles total for this fight, you know, the whole wow. eight weeks. So, yeah. you know, um, I think it's uh, that's the way to go now. You look shredded. Now, Andy, let's talk to you for a sec because people were telling you quit. There was th People were saying, you're done, stop fighting, and you put on a performance. This was the best you looked in a long time. Uh, talk to me. What happened? Oh, uh, well, she's, she's obviously immature and younger than me, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she said that she was going to knock me out and that I needed mm -hmm. to retire, but she doesn't understand is once you get into that level, of course, I'm going to lose some fights because these girls are way better. You know, they, they get better. It gets harder. It gets, it gets competitive, but, um, yeah, so you shouldn't be judging by my record or nothing like that. And that's why she got her ass whooped. Yeah, she got it. Now, are you still with the same boyfriend, the uh, Marine? Yes. Wow, this is, you guys are getting serious. When's the wedding? <laughs> We're already married. <laughs> We're already married. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. 
Good. I like that guy. Seemed like a nice guy. Uh, now, are you still in South Carolina? I'm in North Carolina. This is where he's stationed. Uh, you, you, know, you know, Eric's from Alabama. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I just live here. I'm, a, I'm from the great country of Texas. Let's get oh, that yeah. right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But now you went to Arizona for your training camp. Where, do you, where did you live? Uh, I stayed in, uh, in the Airbnb for, for two months. Wow. In Scottsdale, yeah. Wow. Now, uh, all those cougars, there's a lot of hot cougars that like, they like to prey on young half-black athletes. Was it tempting? I know your wife is very hot, you know, Brazilian. Like, did you hey, don't, hey, you finna get me fucked up, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay, good. I, I, I only went to the grocery store, the gym, and the house. That's it. No oh, good. Good, good, good. I was going to say, yeah, I, yeah, good. Now, were you, were you by yourself in the Airbnb? No, I had uh, Ryder Newman and uh, Curtis Millender uh, to help me with that with this training camp, and they, we all stayed in, uh, in an apartment that, out there. Well, now, where did you train at? Fight ready. Oh, so you were with uh, Cejudo's camp? Yeah, uh huh. With uh, Eddie Chaw, Eddie Chaw, and uh, Santino DeFranco. Wow, that's good. You must, so I mean, was it different getting a whole new look from people? Um, yeah, you know, they kind of built this camp around me, you know, and, and you know, for what I needed. So that's what uh, Curtis and, and Ryder were out there for. And, uh, man, to be honest, you know, those guys had me, you know, you saw you saw my work, you know, and it's, uh, it's a combination of everything that everybody did to help me get ready for that fight. I, I was so happy for you. I was so happy for both of you guys because I know, like, while well, you won three of your last four, uh, but you said you were embarrassed the last fight. I didn't think you were embarrassed. I just thought that, like, a lot of football players, and obviously you're like the highest level football player. Um, you guys just knock everyone out at first because you're just so explosive. But then, like sometimes you get to that next level, and it's just like guys, it's just guys have been doing it their whole lives, and you have to play catch up, and that that's hard. It's really hard to do. Well, you know, I think that's where the, like the athleticism uh, comes into play and the being coachable, and I think that's really just what I needed was uh, a coach who had been there and done that. You know, coached and, um, you know, cornered in championship fights and championship fighters uh, and have won those fights to, to kind of get me over the edge and fill in the holes in what I was missing. Got it. Now, no, Andy, Andy, how come you never age? What's going on? Like, I mean, <laughs> you're like, you've been in your 20s for the past, like, I, I, because you're like 60. And, and like, like, how, <laughs> like, how do you stay in such good shape? Uh, you don't age. Like, like, do you even work? Like, what, what's the secret? What do you do? Asians just don't age. It's just, you know, it's Asians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fished that. <laughs> I'll be 39. Oh, my gosh. I'll be 39 in, like, four weeks. You don't look 39. I mean, I mean, first oh. of all, not, not, but now you didn't come out to your – normally, Eric, you got to see this girl. She comes out when she fought in Japan. She was doing, like, lap dances to the crowd. It was, uh -oh. like, crazy. There was, like, steam. It was, like – You trying like, to get that, that bonus money in one oh, time. <laughs> Like boner money, dude. Like people were people were making it. People were making it rain. Uh, now, it's lion. A band. Now, now, now there was a band. Now, lion Somebody come behind that. you with a broom. It, it was it was insane. Running. It it was insane. I'm telling you, like like at least like 90 women got pregnant that night because their 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 husbands <laughs> finally got hard and they're like, you know what? Uh, now now lion didn't let you do that, right? Lion said no. No, they uh, they encouraged me. They're like, so what kind of like walkout are you gonna do? And I was like, well, for my line fights debut, I broke my arm, like I snapped it in half. And so I walked out to bad to the bone in the arm sling. <laughs> and there was no dance because it's like a little slow, but it was like it, it was epic because it was my return. Oh, got it. Now, do you like kickboxing better than MMA? I love both. Um, I, I love both, but I've always like liked the way line fights were set up when Tiffany Van Zeus used to fight for them. And I remember watching it. I was like, oh, man, I want to do that one day. Like, that was in my bucket list. Like, that was one of my bucket lists. Not bare knuckle, no. But Muay Thai for line fights was one of my bucket lists. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, got it. Now, uh, now Eric, uh, are you going to run it back or what? Um, Man, that, that's entirely up to, that, to Darren and his camp, you know. I don't choose my opponents. I just, you know, whatever name comes across that contract, I sign and show up. Dude, I was actually, I was with Bill. We were watching the fight together. I was in Arizona. We did some weird gig outside where Bill got in trouble because it was like, can, can I tell a story, Bill? You mind? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so we do this gig, and there's a playground next to it. There's like 400 people, 
and a playground. He opens up, he's the first comic, goes on there, he goes, oh wow, I can't believe they're letting me near this playground. I'm not allowed 30 feet away from kids. Like, like there's a whole, <laughs> then he, then oh, he goes. That's a good way to get canceled, That's man. a joke, by the way. Yeah. Not a true story. Then he goes, who here likes uh, masturbation? And that, everyone's like, whoa, he goes, good, because I'm going to jerk off on the whole crowd. That's like, not what I said, you're ruining oh, the timing. Okay, what did you say? I said, I said a joke about, Hi guys, nice to meet you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pleasure. I said I said a joke about sex on weed, and I'm sure you guys smoke weed because I feel like every UFC fighter smokes weed now, right? Yeah, and I yeah. said uh, you lose track of time, and I was like uh, I was going hard with my girlfriend for like for like a long time, and I looked over. Turns out she wasn't there. I don't have a girlfriend. It was just good weed. Next thing I'm getting kicked out of Starbucks, and I go I go that's a <laughs> masturbation joke. Is, are you guys cool with that? I need everyone's verbal consent. Can I have ver to talk about it? They're like, yay. I go, great. Now can I masturbate in front of you? I need everyone's verbal consent. But when I said that, there was a Mormon couple walking by literally as I said, as I yelled out, can I masturbate in front of you guys? And they I probably realized, dug it the most. <laughs> so no, it was just I, like, hey, I'm going to jerk off in front of everyone's face. Yeah, and oh, oh, okay. Sure. Got it. Got it. By the way, so, so Bill, I know we were going to wait, but uh, – uh, Andy didn't get the time right, which is fine, which I, I love her for the death. And then, and, then, uh, and then Eric didn't know what day it was. So we had to start the podcast a little early. Okay, but just so you know, this is my, this is my co-host, Bill Dawes. Very funny comic. Also a brown belt under Henzo Gracie. Uh, oh, so uh, now, by the way, Eric, you almost had your first submission. Oh, uh, shit. You, you, had the, you had the rear naked choke. What happened? Talking about me? Oh, yeah, you. Player. I, don't, I don't go for submissions. I don't even attempt them. I'm about <laughs> these hands, player. <laughs> but, but you had it. You know what I'm talking about, right? You had his back, right? Yeah. And I, I should have, you know. But uh, I think I've had, you know, close to 40 amateur and professional fights. And I think I only have three submission wins between, you know, all 40 of them. So I'm not a big submission guy. Do you just like punch you guys in the face? That's why? Man, I think it's the best way to do it, man. But there was a couple times where you had the guy rocked, and then you went in for the takedown. Uh, was your corner yelling, no, fucking keep it, st keep it standing? Were, you, were they kind of? Um, no, nah, I just felt like he was like a wounded animal, you know? I just felt like that, uh, you know, once he got touched a few times, he would start swinging really hard. And we've seen it time and time again. Guys get clipped by a hurt opponent. So, you know, I uh, thought my chance would be better to get on top and, and then rain the punches down from there. Oh man, uh, you look so. Now, I, were you surprised though? Up. Because like, I mean, you're a. Uh, I mean, you're you're uh, you you made the NFL. You made the the, the uh, CFL, right? You almost made the NFL. You mm -hmm. were uh, all. You were a national champion football player. When you were going for the double, he he actually defended it pretty well. Were you surprised how uh, how uh, strong he was? Oh uh, man, just in the beginning, you know, I was just trying to, you know, lay on him a little bit, get him tired, get his arms heavy, because you know he's heavy handed. But, uh, you know, if your arm's a little tired, he would start carrying him low and uh, not be able to throw him as hard. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to wear him down a little bit. And then, uh, man, but once I touched him, I was like, man, I'm going all in. Fuck it. Now, Eric, I got, I got a question for you, Eric. So you're a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, but you've never yeah. had submission. Do you just feel like that's not the pimp move? Do you feel like the pimp thing is to make someone get knocked man, out by a punch? I'm trying to get paid, and you get paid by knocking cats out. And that's all what right. I do, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I, you know, try and hit them over and over and over until the ref says stop or they go to sleep. So, Bill, if you don't know Andy, because I know Andy wasn't our scheduled guest, she is a girl who she was, in, Ryzen, she was, in, <laughs> she was in Ryzen, right? Uh, she's also now she's she won her fight in Lion Fight last week. She's a girl that's like she's been around, she's got a calendar out, a smoking hot calendar. I mean, you talk about you could see, I mean. Eric, your, your wife might not like, I know she's next to you. But she, she, she walked out of the room. Oh, so oh good. Okay. You, okay let's, if you ever need some, uh, a good calendar. Uh, and she, um, she's also like fun as hell. She's a fun girl. She's married to a, a, a Marine who I met. Real nice guy. Also your trainer, right? Isn't he in your corner? Um, he wasn't this time because he was instructing some students in Key West. But he was watching. Okay. What was he? Yeah, the, <laughs> and he had the best head of hair. In the UFC, oh, okay. in, the, in, the, in MMA, that's amazing. I, I mean, to be honest, I was still pulling out some hair because when you have like corn rolls and you take them out, they're just like, oh, it's terrible. I'm gonna lose all my hair by the age of sixty. 
<laughs> now, now, Andy, Eric also was a military brat. He grew up on military bases in the, in the uh, Philippines, right? Yeah, yeah. Philippines, Japan, and then all over America. Now, now were your parents lesbians, Eric? No. Because it said their names were Gail. I looked it up. <laughs> Gail and Kerry. Oh, yeah. Wh- wh- who is Gail, the man? Gail is a six foot, uh, three hundred pound black man. So, wow. and Kerry is, is, is a little white lady. So <laughs> she's uh, yeah, not good. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I thought did people ever ask you that? Because Gail sounds like a it's a female name. No. I guess it's uh, un- I guess both names are unisex. Yeah, yeah. Gail. So I guess Kerry. it's a spelling, right? Yeah, yeah, G A Y L E, Gail, right? Gale. What are you trying to say then? What? What are you no, trying I'm, to say? Yeah, my I'm, name is it, it, I'm all for it. I, I, that would make it even, see, see, that would make make it even more interesting. If he was raised by lesbian <laughs> military people, I thought you were raised by a le- like, like, like lesbian drill sergeants or something. I was like, that, would make, that would be like the coolest story ever. Um, so, all right, well, listen, uh, you, you, you're kicking ass. I'm so happy for you, Eric. Uh, Andy, when's your next fight? Um. We were talking, there are some Lion Fights is going to Kansas in April and May, but they want to send me international. So I love going outside the country. I love going out, traveling the world and doing what I love. So uh, maybe Sicily, huh? So we'll, we'll... Wow. Yeah, you know they go, they go towards like Europe and France and... Wow. Yeah. I miss going to Asia. I miss Japan. I do. I miss China. I miss, I miss all that. But right now we just can't go right now. They just don't like us. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean they don't like you? They don't like you because of COVID or they don't like you as an American? We just don't care. We're always, we're not wearing masks, you know, we're, we're, we're rebellious, you know, and they, they, they got rid of that pandemic. They didn't even have to go anything because they're already wearing masks from like day one. So they didn't even have to do what we, they did not have any lockdown or anything. Well, they also, so, in, some, in some places, they locked people in, in like a room for three weeks. I, I know people that went to, that went to, China, they weren't allowed out of the house. Like, they were just quarantined in Korea. My friend went to train the Korean zombie and uh, Johnny Case. And they threw him in, they, they, they threw Johnny in like a hotel and they said, with an armed guy outside, you can't leave for three weeks. So it's a whole different kind of quarantine over there. Uh, yeah. But um, all right, this week we got Kevin Holland versus Derek Brunson, some fight picks. Uh, Andy, who wins this fight? I want to pick my boy Derek Brunson. <laughs> Why? Just because he's my boy, I have to root for him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Eric, you? I'm going with Brunson too. I think he's got more ways to win, and since he's uh, been working with Henry Hoof, he just looks like a completely different fighter. Calculated, uh, patient, and uh, you know he's also he's a, quite a punch. So I think he gets it done. Now I watched Kevin Holland train. He talks shit the entire time during training. <laughs> Like, I mean, he was training with Chris Curtis, and he was just, like, going off on Curtis. He wouldn't stop talking. Um, have you ever fought a guy that, like, talks the whole time? Both of you. Andy, you? Or a woman? Uh, yeah, I just talked shit to my component while we were fighting. You could go back with the replay. <laughs> she tried to clinch up with me to change it up, and I, and I just said, your clinch sucks, and then I clinched her. So it was, it was great. <laughs> what, what about you, Eric? Not really, because – Man, you know, I'm usually stopping people. Even win or lose, you know, they feel me. So there's not really much room to talk. <laughs> I like Did uh, Machida say anything to you, Leoto? Hell no. Nah. Yeah, I don't think he was doing his gasping for air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, do you, do, you ever talk, do you ever talk shit? Eric, uh, ever not shit? really. Not no. really. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I got to be provoked to talk shit. Like, I didn't say anything. I'll walk in there and talk shit, but. If but you're all about the money, me, so back. you're about the money. So isn't talking shit? Doesn't that generate more yeah. money? I mean, if they start chirping, you know, then I'll chirp back, you know. But other than that, you know, it's just business for me. What about uh, when you played Alabama football? How, how much shit talking goes on in the football field? Oh my god! Listen, the locker room is the most hostile environment on planet Earth. There is no place that's more hostile than a than a locker room. So yeah, you got to be able to talk shit and take it. At the same time. And then on the football field, it's even worse, you know, because, you know, people are emotionally invested in a win and, you know, talk about your mama, talk about everything. So it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. And now uh, the, this week also, Gregor Gillespie's back. Uh, Gillespie was a national champion wrestler. He got knocked out by uh, Kevin Lee 
fucking hardcore. He says that it was easier to lose by getting knocked out than by getting dominated. He'd rather lose that way. I guess maybe you could be like, well, I just got caught versus I lost every aspect. Um, he's fighting Brad Riddell, who's uh, on a five-fight winning streak, kickboxer from New Zealand. Who wins this fight? Andy. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to go for the kickboxer. <laughs> well, you don't think he's so upset about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Eric Anders, who wins this one? Um, I think Gregor gets him to the ground, wears him out, and then finds a submission in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, too. I think they kind of gave him a kickboxer as like a, you know what, uh, you know, somebody who's not going to wrestle with him. Um, yeah, but, he, but he's not like a Kevin Lee-esque, like explosive athletic type. I'm not saying he's not good or nothing like that. Of course, he can win. But I just think that wrestling will be the dominant uh, factor in this, in the, in this uh, contest. Now, your thoughts on Ben Askren versus Jake Paul. Uh, Andy, who wins this fight? <laughs> this is so, man. Uh... Oh, shoot, I don't know. I, I'm hoping Ben Askren's going to just take him down like how he did in 1OC. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's, it's a boxing match, though. <laughs> it's a boxing match? Oh, yeah. okay. I, yeah. Damn, take Jake him down Paul. anyway. It's Jake Paul. Don't take him down. Uh, Eric? And I'm, I'm really, 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 really pulling for Ben Askren just because if he loses, he's going to let the entire MMA community down. But I think that, you know, Jake Paul actually knows how to box and is going to throw like 50 overhand rights. That seems like <laughs> the only punch that he can throw. And uh, we'll eventually catch Ben Askren. Oh, man. Now, on the undercard of this is uh, uh, Frank Mir boxing Antonio Tarver. Uh, I got to go with Tarver. Even though he's almost 50 years old, he was a world champion. He beat Roy Jones. Frank Mir, he's up there too. Frank, I, yeah, Frank Mir's up there also, but he's not a, it's, it's like his first boxing match uh, ever. Yeah. And he's fighting Antonio Tarver. Eric Anders, he got, what here? He ain't got a chin. Frank he Mir can't take a punch. Yeah, Frank Mir can't take a punch, I don't think, so. Uh, Andy? I, I, I don't know. I didn't realize we switched to boxing. Now, now I'm just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, also got announced. Lamar Odom is boxing Aaron Carter. That's uh, this, I, I I swear they're going to get paid in crack or something. But uh, th this is really happening. Uh, who wins? I, I got to go with Lamar Odom. He's the athlete, right? Yeah, and he's like eight feet tall. So <laughs> if anything, he can learn how to throw a jab. And you know, I don't know how big Aaron Carter is, but he's not. You know, I, I think Lamar Odom is like seven feet tall for real, close to it. Well, Aaron uh -huh. Carter, he, they say he's six feet, but that's like Hollywood six uh, feet would be your really it's five over eight. With. It's over <laughs> with. It's over with. He's going to get jabbed to sleep. <laughs> just, how, how is he going to win? He can't. He's going to have to, like, throw, I don't know. Eric, no Eric, you got to watch the training video of Aaron Carter. He's wearing, like, Lululemon yoga pants, like white yoga pants. He's, like, skinny fat with his tattoos. It's, it's I mean, for him <laughs> what, the what the technique looked like though i mean i could get Not over cool. his, his like love handles hanging over his yoga pants uh yeah. now on the undercard of uh of what's his of uh ben askren jake paul they're having justin bieber snoop dogg doja cat and diplo all perform um oh, that's dope so it's a concert <laughs> with boxing matches in between acts got it no, the, the guy in charge says that the entertainment portion is going to be produced by Emmy winner Burt Marcus, who describes the plan for the show to be unlike anything anyone's ever seen, think Stranger Things meets Tarantino. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you're an actor. Uh, you, uh, you're, yeah. you're a Broadway well, I think they should, have, they should have had Cardi B perform, but then the, then the mat would be all slick and everyone would like trip over themselves during the fight. <laughs> That'd been awesome. <laughs> no. Uh, no, Andy, you, wrestling, huh? Andy, you've been in some, some bisexual relationships. Is it hard for your uh, your husband? Does he ever worry that you're going to go back to the girls? <laughs> if it's Cardi B, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, thanks. Okay. Oh, that's so, all you got to say? Come on. We're three men. You, you said you're bisexual. We need more information. You would smash Cardi B, we know. <laughs> I think everybody here would too, so it's okay. If you smash Cardi B, you smash 10,000 other people based on who she smashed. So it's sort of like, I think you've taken out, like, you know, Rhode Island at that point. 
Um, <laughs> so, all right. Well, uh, and then finally, um, Stephen Thompson says that he deserves a title shot more than Leon Edwards. I got to agree with that. I don't think Leon deserves it. You poke a guy in the eye and, and it goes to a, a no contest that does not get you a title shot. Uh, Eric's doing his own podcast right now. Uh, so I would say Stephen Thompson deserves it more than, I mean, Steve beat Jeff Neal. I didn't think it was going to be Jeff Neal. Uh, do you think that Leon deserves a title shot based on what happened, Eric? Nah, I don't. You know, he's, especially since he's the one who committed the foul. So, you know, I think that uh, he needs to either run it back with uh, Muhammad or find another opponent, which seems to be impossible for him at this moment. So, you know, I think that uh, Steven deserves it over him just because he's been more active, especially over the last year or so. Now, you, do you think, uh, you think Masvidal uh, can beat Usman? He's got a puncher's chance. Um, you know, that guy's been around for a long time, super skilled. But, uh, man, I, I think that the, this fight will look a lot like they did the first time. He'll just be in a little bit better shape. Uh, Andy, your thoughts? And by the way, are you, are, you, are, you, are you a teacher right now? I feel like I'm in a porno and a t guys that are come out right now. Sharpie? Like, what is, what is going on right now? Signing calendars. Oh, oh, you're signing. I feel like this is like, this is like milk <laughs> or something. And like, so, like the student's going to come and be on your desk. And, 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 and me and Bill are going to watch Eric go to work. Okay, so, so what, okay, so what were you saying? Uh, uh, Stephen Thompson, uh, that he agrees to, uh, that he needs to get the title shot before yeah. the other. You're naming people from the Carolinas. So I'm going to say Stephen Thompson and Derek Brunson. And right. then that other match, I do not know those two guys, so I don't know. Right, right, right. Now, were you the only Vietnamese girl in South Carolina growing up? Uh, kind of, except for my, my frammery. <laughs> uh, Wait, Adam, be very careful about Asian jokes right now. That's all I'm going to say. I'm, I'm, gonna I'm not making there. any... Asian joke right now. He, just, he always does it live when I'm in the when I'm in the crowd. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. She's she's a, I, I saw her. I was walking around Key West and I randomly saw her and her, her husband. Just because I guess he he like he I I Yeah, it was so crazy. I just randomly walked into them. Uh and, and then uh Andy's dude, I I've been a fan of yours forever. Forever. So uh listen, both of you guys, I took it away too much of your time. Eric. Thank you for always being so cool. Uh, I hope uh, – stop kneeing people in the face. All right, but uh, – When they're up, when they're down anyways. When it's yeah, up, it's you're, you're, you're the man. And, uh, and Andy Wynn, uh, congrats on the, on the win, and I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Right. Appreciate Thanks. it, brother. Bye-bye, guys. You guys. Sorry I'm late. Oh, it's all good, brother. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing good, man. I missed everything. <laughs> no, that, no, it was like the time, you know, I, I always know, even if I say PST, it means nothing. Because every time I go PST to the fighters, which means like 12 to 1, and then uh -huh. at like nine, at 9 o'clock, I would say one of every three fighters goes, what am I on? I'm like, in three hours. They go, oh, shit. Uh -huh. Like, so, because a lot of them are on the East Coast and yada, yada, yada. And that's kind of what happened this week. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, meanwhile, so I'm like moving, right? I'm, I'm, I'm moving my place. And... Uh, you know, I have a wrestling room in my garage because, you know, my friend who I got the job coaching wrestling got fired for threatening to kill a parent. And then he was like, I'm taking my mats back. And I had enough room in my garage. So we had the whole team who was pissed off he got fired. My buddy Aldo come and uh, put the mats in, right? I don't know if you guys told the whole story of this. So I'll just, I started this wrestling program 13 years ago. I, I'm on Craigslist and they're like hiring a wrestling coach. So I'm looking for a job. I'm like, I, I know, right? So I go down to there and they're like, what do you know about the adult intergender wrestling league? And I'm like, nothing. They're like, you're hired. I guess the guy before me was like, he, he got the job, but he's like, hey, I'm going to use the mats for, la for like, for at nighttime in the school. Is that cool? And they said, sure. Then they, for like the league, then they Googled it. It's like the naked uh, transgender uh, wrestling. And he was going to use it. <laughs> So I knew nothing about it, right? So like, <laughs> I basically got hired just for not knowing anything about this league. So, uh, and then they didn't know, you know what, like, so by my first day, no one knows anything about wrestling. There's, the walls are not even close to padded, right? Kids are yeah. running headfirst into the wall. And I'm yeah. like, I told them, like, I can't coach here unless you guys fucking put the walls up, you know, like put pads on the wall. So now it's like, it's been 14 years and I've been coaching and we won the league a couple times and I love it. We had a kid get into Purdue division one. I mean, but 
the kids all wanted to wrestle in high school. A lot of them did. And I, and I would notice that like there was no high school program because it's a charter school and it feeds into this other school. And I, you, and you see these kids that like, there's like glimpse of hope and you, yeah. their whole life changes around. And then you see them kind of go back to where they were before. They don't, they don't have wrestling because wrestling is a sport that like can really change your lives. Absolutely. Also it's one of those sports where like, you know, parents like my kids failed at every other sport, please help them. Like there's yeah. no cut, there's no cuts, you know, yeah. Sometimes Wrestling is one of those sports like you can you can, with work ethic you can always get good. Right, and a lot of times like the pair, the, the the kid's been coddled and babied and, and like is not tough at all, and the father's like, please save my kid from being a complete you know pansy for I don't know if you can say pansy anymore, but I'm just gonna say pansy, right? If you yeah. say pansy. so anyway, you're quoting, you're quoting the dad, so you can say it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I you're right. So then um, so then I had to lobby to get this high school team coat. Like I had to lobby, right? Like I had to like go there and go there and be like, so they finally put a rest, like after like five years of me begging the superintendent of the school, like, okay, we'll have a, we'll have a high school team. So the first coach comes in, he's great. His name is Randy. He's 27 years old, knows every move in the book. One day he's got, he has a headache. He, he dies of brain cancer. Like just Jesus. Fucking, like three months later, he's dead. Like nicest guy. So they didn't have a coach. So I had an assistant coach that, uh, had gotten banned from New Jersey coaching, but I didn't know why. But the he whole was, state of New Jersey? The whole state. But he was a good coach, but he just screamed really loud. Like, he was one of those guys that, like, there's eight mats, you know, at a tournament, and you're the one guy. So I, as my coach, I had to be like, hey, man, like, you know, stop yelling because we can't be yelling two different things. Anyway, I got him the job as the head coach of, of, of like, the school, and I guess he was screaming too loud. People were complaining. And then he was the JV woman softball coach and, uh, <laughs> and like threw a baseball bat because he was angry and it hit a girl in the leg. So he got fired from, from coaching. So yeah. then they brought in my friend. I had to get a new coach. I had to get my friend Aldo. Aldo was like one of my best friends, but he's like an ex Chippendale slash maybe a leg breaker at one point in his life uh, slash comedian. And beat Kenny Monday back in like the seventies. And, but he's like an old school coach. Like, yeah. Like he would tell the kids like, uh, you know, uh, you know, like quit being pussies. Like, I'm like, you can't, you can't call kids pussies anymore. Although, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> you know, women's cheerleading next door. I'm like, yeah, we, we can't like sort of like, you know, old school coach. Right. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. um, so like he, 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 he like took the van one time and there was no, there was no parking. So he just parked at a handicapped spot and there was like $3,000 tickets later and he didn't want to pay it. You know, like, just like, he's just that guy. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I guess one of the kids loses in a wrestle off, but it's so his father got mad and they wanted to do a rematch, but he also didn't want to do it. So the, the, the father took the kid and had his own, doing his own program. So him and the father got into it uh, like at a tournament and he go, and the father says, I mean, he goes, I'll fucking kill you. Aldo said, the, the, the father videotaped him saying this. So he got fired. So now though, they're on their like, third coach in three years. But anyway, Aldo got fired. So then he's like, I'm taking my mats back. So he put the mats in my garage. So I've been coaching out of my garage, long story short. Well, <laughs> now we're moving. And my wife's like, hey, I have people coming to get the mats off the garage, right? I'm like, great, but it, it's, it's gonna take like, it took 25 kids to put them in there, you know? And you like, you had them drilled into the floor too, right? Drilled into the floor. Build them into walls. Yeah. So cut to one Mexican dude shows up and he's like, I'm here to get the rest of it. <laughs> so and me fairness, and one Mexican dude can usually do that. You know what I mean? Me and him spent all fucking day doing it. Right. So I spent all day moving the mats. Right. And like, you know, he's like, I'm like, how much do I owe you at, the, at like the end? And he's like, well, oh, you helped me. So just give me half. I'm not going to give the guy half. It was a fucking, it was a hell job. You know, it's like, yeah. you the guy everything. I go, how do I pay you? He goes, Venmo. I go, what's your name? He tells me his name. I go, this is it. He goes, yeah. So I sent it to the wrong person. He goes, wait, wait, wait. Then he told me, I'm going, he goes, that's not me. I go, you just told me to send it. He goes, oh, blah, blah, blah. so now the guy starts like crying, right? Oh so now, no. So now I have to like ask the guy on Venmo, hey man, I accidentally sent you the wrong, can you please send me the money back? And it's like $200 or something, right? Yeah. But then every time I press send, I would pay the guy again. So, <laughs> so I pay some fucking dude $800 two days ago, right? And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> the, guy, the guy sent it all back. So yeah, and I'm like, listen, I owe you comedy club tickets, and I'll buy you drinks, and like, I, I you know, take my kid, my wife. Like, I'm like giving the guy everything. Uh, yeah. But and then the guy was like, the Mexican dude was like, just pay me half. I gave him, I gave him a check, and I'm like, just take all of it. And 
So that was yeah. okay. So uh, anyway, I think that happens you? a lot with people. I've done that before. You pay people the wrong the wrong person. If someone takes it, what, it, it are there any way you can get? Is no, there any way you can get it. back other than no. send Aldo over to break their na- legs? No, that's no? it. I mean, that's mm. it. And anyway, luckily, I, I picked the right guy who understood that I'm like a boomer and don't know technology. Uh, but so that was that was one gig. And then uh, then me and you drove what six hours uh, to and from. That was a great trip, though. Yeah, it was that fun. Was, uh, okay, we talked about so much stuff. I would talked about like uh, I, I was I was writing down some funny things I told you. So you know Scott Bayo, who's like a good friend of mine, who fucking I, I love Scott Bayo. Uh, you know, I understand a lot of people don't like him politically. So he's getting into it with Patton Oswald on Twitter and they're going back and forth. Patton started it, but he made a little joke. And then Scott takes the bait every time and doesn't realize these are yeah. comedians. You're not going to win. Yes. So everyone's just bailing, like shitting on Scott Bay. So I put like, Hey, listen, I may not agree with Ploopy Scott Bayo, everything he says, but I know that the guy has, I personally seen him raise like, hundreds of thousand dollars for people that were sick and i've seen and, and had a charity because his, his kid was sick it was a false diagnosis but they still raise money for kids who actually have that and they thank him so i know that's the kind of person i know so that's pretty damn cool right i figure that's adam pretty- you Dude. can't defend someone on the wrong side <laughs> you can't do it it's a cancel culture turducken Dude, somebody somebody writes well jeffrey dahmer took people out for dinner before he ate them. I'm like, like, like this is, the, he, Jeffrey Dahmer bought him a drink for the ate them. Like, this is, this, this is where we go every time. Like, we go right yeah. to there. Like, Epstein wrote, flew him on a private jet before he raped him, yeah. Somebody wrote like, Hitler, Hitler was nice to dogs. Like, that's what, like, I'm like, that's, so Scott Bayo is Dahmer and Hitler because he doesn't agree with you. Like, of that's, course. I mean, what do you even say to that? Like, how do you even, how do you say that? Anyway, it, zip it, you just zip your lips. I mean, it, even everything going on right now, I don't even want to talk about what's going on right now, but everyone's like, another reason why white people suck the worst. And it's just like, you just got to be like, yep, we suck the worst and not say a goddamn so, word. Like I talked about last week, uh, my boarding school memories, like hide memories, right? Yeah. So I wrote, like, I remember being in the dorm and kids would do atomic sit ups where they go, I bet you can't do a sit- atomic sit up. And then, so one kid would lie down and do a sit-up. The other kid would take a towel, put it over his head. And then another kid would come out of nowhere, drop his pants, so the kid's face would go into someone's ass, right? And then people would laugh, blah, blah. Well, they did it to a kid, and he ran away from school. And then they had to, and the two kids that did it had to tell the dean and demonstrate what an atomic sit was to the dean, right? So I wrote, that's a ridiculous story. So yeah. I put that up, and someone writes, oh, sexual assault is funny. And I'm like... I mean, it is sexual. In their defense, it is sexual assault, but it's got a cute name. So it's a tough one. <laughs> but it's like, these are 13-year-olds, 14-year-old kids playing pranks on each other. Like, I, I mean. Th- you know, when I was in high school, there was something called lotioning on my football team. That's when they would, they would take a kid and pin him down, take his pants off, and get a bottle of cocoa butter and squeeze it into his butthole. And that was like how you'd haze people on the football. I never got lotioned, by the way. Now, that was just like a thing. But looking back now, you're like, Jesus Christ, that's pretty much like anal rape. Yeah, no, that is, it is. But, right, like there was another time the kid had a taser. One kid, this kid Roland, who was insane, he got a taser. And another kid was my roommate, who was like a, like a full-on drunk at like 15. And he was sleeping. And the guy put the taser and he tased his, his balls and his cock <laughs> while he was sleeping. <laughs> And the guy said he went hard for like a week. Like that was what he, like. He was so, hard so, for a week? Yeah. That's the what guy who tased them or the guy who got tased? The guy who got tased was hard <laughs> for a week, right? Wow, so, that's good I, to know. So I wanted to post that in my ridiculous, but I'm like, no, forget that one. That really is, I don't know. It's yeah. just, it's just it's, <laughs> look, it just does seem, and these are not good examples, but it does seem like everybody, like you ever see like that one person at the, either in class or at the club or at the party, who's just like miserable in the corner, doesn't laugh at anything, doesn't want to be there, mm-hmm. everything sucks. It, yeah. seems like, it seems like that person is now running comedy. Uh, well, or, that person's like, definitely on Twitter. That person's yeah. running what everyone else is allowed to talk about. Like, we yeah. all have to cater. It used to be like, fuck that person. Like, that would be like, I don't give a fuck what he says. Like, I'm having, I'm having fun. Now it's like, it's the hall monitor. 
that like is mm-hmm. running like the social media. We're like, when yeah. did this person get the most power? When did we elect the hall monitor to be the president of social media? I don't know. I, when did it? Yeah, it, it, I mean, do you think it changed with when Trump got elected? Do you think that's when it changed, or was it happening before then? I don't know. I mean, I think that like, for example, even today, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, so I'm completely ignorant on what this person said. But I guess this black girl who was the editor of Teen Vogue got fired for racist comments that she made and her teenagers on Twitter, when she was a teenager on Twitter. She's 27 now, so it was 10 years ago. Look, there was no Twitter around when I was in high school, okay? Everyone that like is over 30 or 35 should realize that like, we're so quick to judge, but we didn't have Twitter. So think about yeah. like how many more people would be fired right now if we had access to Twitter. But so if someone's a teenager, unless they're like, putting up like swastikas or crosses or news, something like insanely where you're like, okay, if somebody makes stupid comments, I, I, I tend to say, well, they were a teenager and they shouldn't have their life ruined. When you are a teenager, you're not thinking, oh, one day I'm going to get a job and this is going to come back to bite me in the ass. You're thinking like about like that moment that's happening at that time. Mm-hmm. So I'm willing to cut the person some slack, but you know, I don't know exactly what the person said. So I'm speaking out of, whatever you know well the way it is now and by the way there there was a girl who was i think she was 16 and she was singing a rap song that had the n-word in it so she just was singing the raps and made a video when she applied to college like a year and a half later two years later she got uh she couldn't get in because of that video got released like someone because basically what happens is people will just look for it they'll just dredge through everything you've ever done and try to find the thing to get you fired if you have any success it's crazy i mean it's yeah. it's, it's nuts it, it's just uh like the one place it doesn't happen is like sports right now. Maybe there's so much money where like someone's not like, well, that basket doesn't count because uh, 11 years ago you made a tweet. So even though you yeah. won the game, you really lost because. Yeah. Like, and also can rappers, can rappers get canceled? Like, could Cardi B literally say anything that could get her canceled or do anything? I mean, she admitted to drugging people and robbing them. Yeah. When she gave them at, at a strip club. Like she admitted to that. And then she then said she was kidding or something, but. If like, I don't know, somebody said, yeah, I used to drug girls and rape them, or, or I used to drug them and rob them, uh, but I don't know if I would get album of the year. I, I just don't think that there's a different standard. I, I, I don't understand why that's being glossed over. I think, there's, I think there's too much money to be made right now with her. I feel like yeah, once, once the, that well draw, dries up, like with R. Kelly or something, then people are like, wait a minute, let's, let's look into your past. It feels yeah. like when you're generating money for people, they're, they're quick to look the other way. Bing, 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 bing. I say that all the time with Harvey Weinstein. I mean, Harvey Weinstein was always a piece of shit and everyone knew it. I mean, I was in grad school in, in NYU and I knew about that. And I always say that if Harvey Weinstein's last film was, was uh, Pulp Fiction instead of Tulip Fever, this probably never would have happened. It, it's, it sucks. It's just terrible. It, it's fucking terrible. All right, let's talk about some fights that's going on. Yeah. So, uh, or at least some uh, MMA stuff. So monster energy drama. All right. So Dominic Cruz, basically, after his last fight, called out Hans Molenkamp, who is – I'm trying to find as much as possible. So I guess Monster hired this guy to be, like, the guy that, like, gets fighters to come and join Monster and and puts money in their pocket. Well, he makes these videos, which I always thought were kind of lame. I'm not – like, I'm a fan of Jackass, but if you're going to do a prank, like, make it a fucking cool prank. Like, kicking – uh, a cup of coffee out of someone's hand is just like, and then going and then laughing about it. It's just not really my idea of like a, a fun prank. I, I just, that's not really, I never laughed at that. I'd be annoyed being the guy kicking it. I'd be the guy drinking coffee, the person next to it. I'm just not that guy. Yeah. But Hans thinks it's hilarious and people are like commenting it. Well, Dominic is not the guy. Dominic is a guy that tells you exactly how he feels, which I love Dominic. I love, I mean, Dominic's a guy, if he doesn't like you, he'll say, I don't like you. And yeah. And he'll tell you, you suck if you suck. And if he likes you, he'll tell you he likes you. That's what I always love about Dominic is he'll tell you exactly how he feels. Very rare in this day and age. So he calls out Hans Molenkamp. And then all, and all of a sudden, Bisbing said that, like, Hans called Bisbing and goes, hey, man, me and you are good friends. And Bisbing's like, no, we're not good friends. We're acquaintances, uh, which is okay. And then Bisbing, I guess, got dropped by Monster. But then Rampage uh, stuck up for him. He stuck up for him. So now there's a whole thing about this guy. Listen, if this guy is making fighters lose 
I guess the thing is he's making them think like, hey, you have to roll with Hans and pretend he beats you. And then you'll get money. You'll get money from Monster. If that's I mean, happening. Yeah. That's that is the problem. But has that happened? I mean, has that been that like you're gonna lose your your uh, sponsorship if you don't do this shit? Is that actually happened? It, that's that, that's what that's the word on the street is that you have to go and make it seem like he's beating you in sparring, and then you get the sponsor. <laughs> oh, I thought it was like is I thought it was like if you don't take a selfie with me, you'll lose your. I thought it was like I think I think that, I think that's me. going on too. This is all allegations, but but I think that there's all kinds of like. Uh, you get stuck in a contract with some of these people. With, uh, they can't get out of the contract. It's, it's all kinds of things. I mean, this is what happens when people get power. And like, I see it as a, as a comic. How many times have we seen as a comic, the booker that comes into a comedy club, first day you love them, second day you love them. Then all of a sudden this swarm of comedians start kissing the guy's ass and doing drugs with them and buying them. Before you know it, the guy's like a dictator. And I mean, I've been sexually harassed. But I, my, my, I mean, coming in, when I first started doing comedy in my early 20s, there was a guy that would go, how important is your comedy? And then, like, brush up against me. Yeah. Every, like, every time he would pass me in the hall, he would put his hands on my hips and then, like, Whoa. brush up. Or another guy, I was like, how do I get spots? He goes, you got to play with my balls. Like, like, I actually ran into a guy recently. I did a, a Zoom show. And one of the guys who, that used to do that to me was on the Zoom show. Now he's out Holy of the shit. And I was, I didn't know that. The guy was like, hey, man, will you do this charity thing? And I'm like, sure. And that fucking guy comes up and he's like, hi, Adam. And I, and I felt like saying, motherfucker, you used to give me the check spot for three minutes every time. You would fucking sexually harass me. I was in my early 20s. I didn't, looking back, I probably should have fucking said something. Or There was no one to tell either. Of course. That was like, like, you couldn't. And maybe it's different with guys also. I feel like it was a bad situation. Look, I'm not, I'm not saying I was necessarily me too. I didn't like blow anybody or have to do that. But it was, it was in today's standards, if what happened to me happened to female comics, if, if, if oh, male yeah. comics would brush their fucking cock against a girl's ass all the time and go, how important is your comedy? Forget about it, you know? And, yeah. and, right, and rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I came up to New York theater. So, you know. <sighs> And I was, I used to rollerblade in a tank top. So trust me, I was like, the term was gay bait. And, uh, and they were, you know, they were aggressive. But as a guy, you just don't feel, you never, you never feel in danger. Or like, you aren't going to feel in danger. I don't feel in danger. So maybe it's a little bit different that way. Like not feeling in danger. You just kind of feel like, what are you doing? I didn't but feel in danger, sucked. but a part of me did feel like uh, demasculated or emasculated. Yeah. Is that what the word? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I definitely felt like I was like, you know, fuck, man. I, it was definitely not a good feeling, an awful feeling. And 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 yeah. then looking, and now even telling it, I'm worrying about the comments. Like, you fucking bitch. How do you let a guy do that to you? You know, like even. And now this is 20 years later, and so now I'm even more like thinking, like, oh, how can? So anyway, but is Hans doing that to people? No, okay. Uh, and maybe these guys. It just it seems like Dominic, and and uh, is is the guy. But you know what? Cruz, I'm good for Cruz. I mean, good, good for him. Fucking, um, One thing he said, he goes, he goes, I'm not going to let someone use me for my clout. That's what people do. I mean, that's the whole point of, so point of social media, right? Is you use people for their clout. No one's going to take a picture with like the person who works at CVS and has four, four followers. You go and you get the picture taken with like the big star and just be like, look how I'm casually hanging out with Justin Bieber right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's tough, but I, I, I like it. I like it. Um, Kelvin Gaslam has stepped in, uh, and he was fighting Robert Whitaker. Um, it really depends on how fat Gaslam got, because I see him sometimes. He, he, there's a guy, you know, I don't know. You always think you give him that, so you know, much shit on Twitter, man. You fucking he, he are after. He asked me to. He asked. He goes, "When are you gonna make fun of me?" And I ran into him, and I'm like, because he's like, I, I guess I'm a good friend. We, we, yeah. we were at the Tyson Ranch together watching Tyson fight, and I was like. And I ran to him and he was with his girlfriend. I was with my wife and, and, and she's, he's like, you always give me shit. I'm like, you asked me to. He goes, once. His mom and sister comes to my show. He's the nicest. You talk about a guy that is just not affected by fame. And uh, he is the nicest person you will ever meet. He is such a good guy, Kelvin. Um, once he decides, he's like, 
uh, it's like a pit bull that once he decides he's your friend, he's like, all he wants to do is like cuddle, but you know, he would murder you if he wanted to, but he's yeah. like, no, you're my guy. I got nothing but love for Kelvin. Um, uh, I had to actually, the time that he missed weight against Donald Cerrone at Madison Square Garden, and no one, everyone was mad at him. And I had to call him from a blocked number so he would answer. And then, uh, and then we, he said I was like one of three people that talked to him. You oh, know? wow. Um, but he's, uh, he's so good. But the he same is. Time, you're like, man, what if he was at 170? Like, what he, if he was at 170? But he's so comfortable at, 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 at middleweight. I don't understand why he doesn't just say, okay, let me just stay at middle and, and quit well, trying to Well, he does, but at the same time, you're like, there's a huge size difference. I mean, yeah. you, you see it even with the Weidman. Like, you just saw Chris Weidman was just so much bigger than him. Um, yeah. And then I mean, Marvin Vittori is going to be much bigger than him. He, I, I, he, but he could win. He, he hit so fucking hard, and yeah. he's so good at everything. Short notice fight, I mean, who knows? Uh, it just depends on how much weight he has to lose is what, really what it is. Did he, has he lost weight at middleweight yet? With Darren he, Till, he, was that middleweight and he lost weight? No, yeah, he fought, no, yeah, he fought Darren Till at middleweight. He lost at middleweight to Darren Till. But uh, did, did, he, did he make weight? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's never missed weight at 185. Okay. He's come yeah. close. I mean, he's come in and, I mean, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, he's such Have a- Have you asked him? Dude. Dude, I went to his house one time. I drove to Towson Lawrence County. There was like nine people living there. But he was the only one that actually, there was a guy like downstairs, there was a barber shop. Somebody was just cutting people's hairs. Like, like, a fucking, like it's just, he's just <laughs> that dude that lets everybody just stay with him. Like, he's just that guy. He smokes weed too. That's what it is. He smokes weed. He gets the munchies. Yeah, he smokes weed. Bomb he's Mexican. Mexican. He's probably like, I, he was the baby of the family. So his yeah. mom made him so much food. You know, mm. he grew up like just eating unhealthy food, but he's so damn talented. He's just yeah. a talent. And he's a, and he's a gamer. I think he was like the, he doesn't use his wrestling that much, but he, he won the States. He, he won the States in Arizona, I think as like a fifth seed or a seventh seed. And, you know, he steps up, he, he knocked out Bisbing. He's yeah. not, but it's just, uh, I mean, Mike Dolce says he could be at 55. I mean, he won the ultimate, he was the last pick of the ultimate fighter. Remember yeah. he beat Uriah Hall in the finals. Yeah. Um, but he's such a funny dude. He's such a, such a good dude. Like you would, you would not know that uh, he was like number three, Two rank guy in the UFC. Yeah, he used to be yeah. a bail bondsman. <laughs> he was a fucking because ba- he 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 went to college for a year. He missed his mom, so he he dropped out. Aww. Like, like, just like, like who who drops out of college because they missed their mom? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and if you give him shit about it, he'll knock you the fuck out. Oh, yeah, a whole laugh, a whole laugh about that, a whole laugh about it. Like he's just yeah, like yeah. he's just a good dude. Uh, but yeah, I'm fucking. So a guy named uh, Ty Tavusa, he's the guy I think that wears the diaper, I believe. Um, I he's fighting a guy who's taking on uh, Eric uh, Harry Hunsucker, uh, who's seven and three, mm-hmm. who who either knocks you out or gets knocked out. There's you know that's they're smart. They get these guys that like, you know, maybe don't deserve to be in the UFC, but they know it's going to be a knockout or get knocked mm-hmm. out. They're like fuck it, you know, people will want to watch this. I don't know. We're we're stalling because I don't know where Jin Yu Fry is. So, you know, that's yeah. the whole reason I'm here is I want to meet Jin Yu Fry. I'm going to hit her that, up on, on, uh, on Instagram. You know, she's just, you know, I stay up all night learning about her. And then this girl has like a master's degree. Uh, yeah. She's a uh, science, right? Yeah. She's beyond smart. Um, but you know, what sucks is like when you, when you uh, hit somebody up and then you, it says, not, it doesn't say red. Uh, oh, you shit. are so funny. We'll do. All right. So here we go. Jin Yu Fry. Uh, doesn't say, can you come on now? All right. Can you come on now? She's half Korean. You are so funny. Uh, you're the best. So, uh, yeah, she, you're the best. So what's the name? Cause I'm really funny by the way. Andy the Crasian. Um, so yeah. So Justin Bieber, we got Gastelum. We'll talk about that. We're waiting but for- But you mentioned something, you mentioned something about having a, like, what would your name be? Yeah. What would your name be if you were a fighter? Oh, what, what, what would your my, nickname? My nickname, that's true. Uh, fucking tenacious or something, or doesn't know when to quit. Or uh, yeah. what would yours be? 
Um, I don't know. Something, something about like country strong. <laughs> I, 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 like, <laughs> I like funny ones though. Like the librarian. Yeah. You know, what would be great is you had like a, a, a name that was like, so like giggles, like Bill giggles Dawes. Cause then people are like, Oh, I got just beat. Up. I got beat up by Bill giggles Dawes. <laughs> But like, there's a guy named Jeremy uh, Jordan Johnson, and his name is Big Swinging Johnson. <laughs> I like. That's great. That's great. I think Adam Hunter, like if I was Adam Milf Hunter, there's something where you like they say something and then they're like, you know, or like they have to say it. The STD kid or something, something that's like you're just like, or I hate my life or depression or something like seasonal depression. <laughs> Uh, Adam, seasonal affective disorder hunter. So why did you become a comic, Bill? Uh, you know, I was an actor and I, I just hated the fact that I was doing all these plays with playwrights who treated me like garbage because I was nothing but like a vehicle for their brilliant words. Ha! So, after, you know, that's how it is. When you, particularly when you go to school for acting, you get out and you're in New York and you have a playwright and they're sitting there with their glasses with their legs crossed, all pretentious and everything they say, you go, hey, I think this might be better if I change this word. They're like, you're an actor. Uh, and after like years of that, man, I was just like, fuck this. Like six, seven years out of, gra- out of school, I was just like, you know what? I'm done with that shit. So yeah, so then I became, I became a comic. I was like, you know, I can tell, I can, at least if, if it's shitty, at least I die my own sword. You know what I mean? At least if the writing is bad, I don't have to go, oh, I'm doing this shitty play at the Soho Theater rep downtown. I just go like, yeah. oh yeah, I told a dumb dick joke. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, as an actor, I feel like sometimes you're only as good as your team, you know, or the play yeah. you're in, or the like your 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 co-stars. Where that's kind of like why I got into comedy too. I mean, I just wanted I knew if I had something where I had more control over it and I could work yeah. as, work your ass off. I mean, you could work your yeah. ass off as an actor, and then you could be that annoying guy doing the monologue to everybody, and everybody <laughs> wants to like run from you when they see you. And all you want to do is talk about acting, and people are just like. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And that's another thing too is you could do. You could have a great playwright, a great play, a great director, and just like a shitty costume designer, and it'll ruin the whole fucking experience. Or like a shitty co-star. Just one bad element in a play, and the whole fucking... Th- Same thing with like, you know, you shot pinned. I mean, everything was yeah. kind of, you know, seemed like it worked out. But like, you have one bad element, like one oh, person... No, there, was one, there was one actor that like completely was, couldn't get their lines. And I had to act with them, and I had to tell them their lines. Then they had to do their lines. I do my lines back. So I'm like, I got to know your lines too, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm, I'm like, fuck, you know. I saw, I saw you coach those, those little kids. And some of them, obviously, they never acted before. They're like 10 years old or something yeah. like that. And you're like, yeah. okay, do it this way. And they would do it the exact same way every time. Like, okay, great. That was almost there. Now do it again. They do it the exact same way. I mean, that I know, takes- And I'm like acting time. and coaching and producing. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. But I, I actually became a comic originally because uh you know i got sued for 20 million dollars in college right that story no oh this will this will this will buy some time and and see if jinyu fry ever comes so um when i was in college you know i wrestled in college and i was just uh i was at binghamton i only got into binghamton it's a great school because of my wrestling like i had like the lowest sats in the entire school um (laughs) except for maybe one kid on my team had worse than me so but every thursday night they would uh, we have our matches on friday or would weigh in on friday so Thursday night, I'd be stuck there cutting weight, and they'd have this, like, talk show, like, public access. They tried to talk about, like, serious issues at the time. And I would just call in, and they'd be, like, talking about, like, race relations. And I'd be like, yeah, just like the time Devane did that. And like, who? I'm like, Devane and my dick. And I'd hang up the phone, and I'd, like, fucking <laughs> completely, like, fucking bogart their show and laugh, you know, to myself and to, like, three people on, in, in my dorm. So then I'm like, you know, after I quit wrestling, I'm like, I got to do something with my life. I'm going to be a loser. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll, I'll have my own talk show. I'll, I'll be a talk show host. So I went down to the studio and pretended to like learn this thing. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, I'll call it D's Nuts. And they gave me Monday nights for four hours, a four hour show. And I had like a bunch of people on the wrestling team as a panel, some like local Bud Mutt Weiser model girl, like, and uh, my other friend. So I jump in front of the thing and I'm like, hey, welcome to D's Nuts, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a great show. We have this, that, that. We'll talk about anything you want. And then I had a guy writing stuff at the bottom of the screen, right? Like, so first question in, they're like, 
are you Vanilla Ice or Corey Haim? Or now everyone's pranking me. Like the same thing I was doing to them. Yeah. They were like, hey, what's wrong with your ear? You have cauliflower face. Like just what? And I'm like, fuck you. I'm like 17 at the time. I'm like, I don't know how to really defend myself. But I'm having fun. It's like funny. But I'm bald because they shaved my head for wrestling. That was like initiation, which was another. So then this girl calls up. She's like, my name is Hannah. And you always sweat me at the gym. You always check me out. Now, I was going to the gym and I was wearing two rubber suits at the time to lose weight. I wasn't sweating. I was sweating. I was sweating myself, like, yeah. like losing nine pounds. But I kind of knew who she was, but I'm like, okay. She's like, you check me out. I'm like, all right, well, what, what does your ass look like? And I'm, I'm playing along. So then the whole, like, it's all in every dorm now is glued to this show, right? Called, and the people are calling in, they're like, well, you know, Hannah, you know, what is it, you know, Hannah stole my jeans from the laundry and some guy's like, Hannah, I came over to your house, wasn't drunk, your dorm room, and you wouldn't let me touch your tits. And it's because you have big pepperoni nipples. Just like, he's like, my name is Seth. And then, so then, then she calls back in. That guy, Seth, is a fat fuck. Now it's like Jerry Springer, right? I don't know. Who, I'm a freshman. I've been at school for a month. I don't know who any of these people are, right? <laughs> but I'm like kind of happy that they're not making fun of me. So then Hannah decides to come down and defend herself while we're live on the air. So she comes into the downstairs, like by the cafeteria where the studio was, Binghamton Television. She goes, this guy, Seth, is a fat fuck and he needs to get his ass to the gym and, and fuck him. He's a loser. And she sits down to take calls. Every call now is like, can I park my car up your snatch? And oh then she was like this girl from Cardoza, Queens, right? She was wearing a Jewish star. And one girl was like, take that Jewish star and stick it up your ass. Like, and then- Whoa. It was, and then the guy in the bottom was writing on the bottom of the screen, like Hannah doesn't like, it's not a whore, she just likes sex. So this like old Marine that was like 40 is writing these like, so then it's just, so then she's getting killed, right? So then she goes back yeah. to her dorm and people are chanting her name and some people are throwing water balloons at her. Then that guy, Seth came on the air and he's oh, all no. drunk. He was captain of the soccer team and, he, and he's like, fuck Hannah, blah, blah, blah. And then, so lo and behold, like that was the first show, right? And the last show. <laughs> they canceled the shows after that, right? Like, like, I'm the most famous person on campus. I'm walking out, people are pointing to me like, that's the guy from D's Nuts, right? <laughs> she, she sues the school for $20 million, right? She sues me for $20 million, uh, and she sues Seth for $20 million. A $60 million lawsuit, right? I got sued for negligence. I got sued for like being a, uh, uh, oh, I was like being a, uh, I'm, I'm Jewish and I'm anti-Semite because I laughed when the girl said stick to Jewish. But I was laughing like nine things the girl said before that. I didn't even hear that, you know? So it goes to the Supreme Court of Brooklyn, right? What but, the fuck? Yeah, yeah. My, her parents I, must have been lawyers or something. How did she even yeah, like? Yeah, parents were lawyers. Okay. My fucking, my, my dad was like, you go to school for three months, you come back with a fucking 20 minute lawsuit. Like, <laughs> can't you just go to class like everyone else, right? <laughs> they, they threw it out of court. The fact court. that like, they had to watch this for four hours. I couldn't believe the Supreme Court had to watch this show for four hours. because They had to break down the whole show and say <laughs> that she was the one that like instigated it. And that I took a lot of shit from everybody. They were making fun of me as well. Like it was all in the court case, right? And I was covered by the school insurance, like thankfully, and I didn't have to get a lawyer, but I, I, I couldn't say anything about it. So then, but then I'm like, man, now I'm going to be known as the guy from D's nuts. Like that's going to be my legacy in school. Like not exactly. Head school wants to beat me up. So I joined a fraternity because I needed friends quickly. Yeah. And I'm like this sucks. This, this is what we're paying for friends. I don't want to pledge, but the parties were cool. So then there was a girl on uh, this guy was giving auditions for the black dance team in my school, like it's called Tatiana. And I'm like, Oh, you gotta be black. She's like, no. So I tried out as like a joke and I made the team. I was like, I was like the affirmative action part of the, like, and <laughs> I was like one of five guys to try out, but like, it was like 25 hot girls and me. I was the only white person. But I, I realized that if you got, I got out of pledging by going to black dance practice. So that year I won most dedicated member of the black dance team. I, I oh, actually, that's great. I got that, was, that was my freshman year in college. Crazy. That's so funny. What was the name of your, your dance company again? The Black Dance Repertoire. It was literally called the Black Dance Repertoire. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in a dance company at Princeton called Body Hype. Really? Oh, really? Uh-huh. You were and it was like, that? yeah. Same wow. thing. It was like, and it was like, like five guys, six, seven guys, maybe, and like twelve ex ballerinas. <laughs> who were like super hot. 
That's pretty, yeah. yeah no, it, it was fun because like they would come to the parties, like our frat parties. We, me and like seven black dudes, just breaking it down like in sync, and they'd be like, "Hello, that's that cool." Shit, man. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was pretty cool. All right, so let's talk some more fights. Uh, Brunson versus Holland. Who do you who, who do you think is gonna win this fight? Holland. Holland. I think Holland's one of those guys. I mean, because he talks so much shit, everyone wants him to lose. But like, I don't know, man. I I I feel like he's like Stipe in the sense that everyone's like. Uh, it's, it's, he's about to fucking, but he always delivers, man. I mean, he got a knockout from his back. That was crazy. From like his knees. Like, I that think was, that guy is like legit. Who do you, was that Jacare he knocked out from his back? Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. I mean, you, you, you watch him. He's really tall. People don't know yeah. how big this dude is. He said he wants to fight Jake Paul next. He said, really? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. He thinks that Jake, he's going to, everybody thinks that Jake Paul's going to beat Ben Askren, except for Dana White's going to put a million dollars on it. You said that he's going to bet on, that's going to be the second time he'd be bet on Askren loss. That's, yeah. That was really funny. All right. So Jin <laughs> Free, I hit her up saying, I go, is this thing on? Uh, so we'll see if she, she, she's not looking at it. Nah, damn. So I guess we'll have her on next week. Um, yeah. But uh, sorry, we had, we, had, we had two really good guests this week. Um, yeah, that was great. Was great. So, all right, so let's talk. Uh, and then, uh, do you know the other guys fighting? Do you want to talk about some of the, uh, the other fights that are going on? Sure, who is it again? All right, well, this week, LFA is Johns versus Souza. There's Fists of Fury. Um, but let's go through the ESP. So Max Griffin uh, is on the card. I love Max Griffin. Max Griffin is a good dude. He, um, he's like one of, if you guys don't know Max Griffin, he's a really, really good fighter. Um, he's also like a big conspiracy guy. And he's, he's very anti-lockdown. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So it, it's always and it's uh it's always fun when like um uh, when like uh um the, like the fighters just like just like just go off like this is like fuck it you know it's probably yeah. also because they're like you know so let's see what else we got I you feel like there's probably a lot of fighters that are very conspiracy theorist minded you know what I mean I think so first of all they they have brain damage a lot of them number one and number two is like there's okay but i'm kidding but number two like it, it, there there is something about fighting being the ufc like the military that lends itself to a very kind of like independent slash right wing mindset you know what i mean they're not they're not a ton of bleeding heart liberals that are looking to beat the fuck out of somebody for a living you know what i mean there are but i think we we can skew it's like the military you can skew it a little bit towards the right and i feel like yeah. the right is a bit more conspiracy minded I, I also think that like right now it seems like the right are like outliers in some ways, you know, um, and, and fighters are that way. Like fighters are rebels. Like no one, I think nobody says like, I'm sure dads are like, my, my kid's going to be a fighter, you know, but uh, for the most part, like no one's sending their kid to school to come home yeah. and become a fighter, you know? I, like, yeah. I love the, and they don't want, they don't want to believe the government. They don't want to be like, you know, shills for the government. So now that the government believes in UFOs, now the new conspiracy is like UFOs aren't real, you know? Really? UFOs aren't real? Yeah, that's a new conspiracy. Come on, really? Uh-huh. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> I don't even know where to look this up. All right, so Cheyenne Buys, uh, who came to my show, smoking hot uh, girl, by the way, and cool. She's fighting this girl, Montserrat Ruiz. Cheyenne Buys was a girl who got kicked out of high school because I guess people were bullying her friend, and she beat up like seven bullies at once, uh, yeah. and then went to their houses and beat them up. And their parents, like, she has some crazy story that it was, like, out of a, she did, she did the podcast a, a while back, basically beat up everybody. Um, so, yeah, I got to root for her. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I feel like, I feel like with women, you always root, this sounds awful, you always root for the hotter woman. I mean, really. <laughs> for men, maybe not. But for women, it's like. I, I, not, not me. I root for the one I usually know, personally, who yeah. doesn't hate, the one who doesn't hate me, uh, is the one who, uh, <laughs> is, is, is the one, the one who hates me less is usually who I, who I root for. Uh, Marion yeah. Renault is the oldest fighter, I think, in the UFC. She's also a school teacher, uh, con- and she continues to be a school teacher. She's a smoking hot Belizean. She's taking on Macy Chasen, who won the Ultimate Fighter, who looked like she was just going to fuck everybody up, and then ran into some other girls and that didn't happen but uh this should be a good fight marion like sometimes pulls off crazy submissions that like she wins fights that you don't you don't think she's gonna win um so this should be a good fight it should be a really good fight uh now she's actively a school teacher actively a school teacher what grade high school high school yeah can oh, you wow. imagine like your high school i think she's like maybe a gym teacher like it goes out and like fight isn't it, like like i'd much rather have that than like you know kevin yeah 
what's his name? The guy from uh, the Boom movie. Uh, oh yeah, Kevin James. Yeah, I'd rather have ma- fucking marry a, a hot Belizean than Kevin James fighting for my. Uh, yeah. uh, so. And then all right, now we'll skip to next week. We got uh, UFC 260, Steve Bay versus Ngannou. Um, I got Steve Bay. I, I don't know why. Everyone's telling me Ngannou, but I just feel like he's a really bright guy, and he's not going to stand there in front of Ngannou. To yeah. Get I mean, I think it's going to play out the same way because because you know how it is, Adam. You've been a wrestler for a lot of your life. If you don't have, if you're not a wrestler, you can't really learn a wrestling base at age thirty. You know what I mean? It's like learning how to dribble a soccer ball when you're forty. Like you, you're mm-hmm. you're going to suck. So I feel like if Stipe doesn't get caught, he'll just do the same thing and take him down. It'll be half guard. It'll just keep him out for the round. But he has to get him down with that and get caught. That's the whole thing. And Sibay did tell me personally, he said that Nagano was the, the hardest hitter he's ever experienced in his life. Yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Uh, Volkanovski's taking on Ortega. That's a good fight. I mean, Arte- everybody just, like, dropped Ortega and said, oh, he's done. And yeah. then he beat the zombie, and everyone just went right back on that, on that, mm-hmm. uh, that, that train. It was so – I never saw anybody get, like – Everyone's like, we're done with this guy. All right, you're, you're back. I mean, holy shit. Um, but Volkanovski is consistent, consistently a beast. And for some reason, I like him in this fight. I don't oh, know. Oh, really? I like Ortega. You like Ortega? Yeah. He did we, make a bet? We, got, we got to keep making bets every, yeah, every yeah. week. All right, I, I, got, I got 50 on Volkanovski. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, he did date Halle Berry, though. So yeah. uh, you got you to gotta give him that. Uh, even <laughs> if he loses, he won. That's what I hear he dated Halle Berry. Um, Tyron Woodley. Taking on Vicente Luque. Uh, Woodley, man, please win, Tyron. Please. Yeah, he has to. If he doesn't, it might be the time, you know? Yeah. But he's so good. He's so good. Everyone hates him. Why is he so inconsistent? <sighs> Talk about mental. I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. I mean, but his last fight against Colby was rough. Yeah. That was like, I did not see it playing out that way. I thought it was Colby be was on point that fight too. Colby was fucking great that fight. That was his best fight, I think. Oh my god! And and he still can't get a title fight, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and then uh, Sean O'Malley versus Almeida. Almeida's like I think lost three out of four. O'Malley says he's still undefeated, which pisses everybody off. Everyone's like, "No, you lost." But as much as I, people are gonna get mad at me. I still think he's undefeated. That was a weird leg give out. <laughs> I know it was strange. It was strange. Like everyone says, well, it wasn't like Anderson Silva where he got dominated against Weidman the first time and the second time yeah. he was losing. And then the guy, he was, O'Malley was winning that fight. Or at least yeah. I thought he was winning. I don't know. I don't consider that a loss. Yes, it's a loss. I get it. But if I'm being totally honest, I'm kind of on his team in this one. Uh, yeah. Do you think that was a loss? For sure, it's a loss, man. Really? I mean, it's a loss if you can't if you can't keep fighting. Period. Yeah, but is it though? I mean, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, it's a well, loss. Put it this way: he shouldn't go around saying that he's undefeated. What is he getting from that? Other than people going "fuck you," he doesn't get anything from that. You know what I mean? He doesn't look cool saying, "Technically, guy, I'm undefeated." You're I, you're right. You're right. You're right. I mean, but I like I like O'Malley. I mean, not just because I'm Irish, just because like you know he's got he's got I like his style of fighting too. It's amazing. But I think that's why his his ankles are giving out. You don't have to you don't have to do spinning wheel kicks every single fucking time. It's not you know, <laughs> I, it's like, yeah. bro, it, it's it's not capoeira. It's, you have uh, he's fighting. You know, it's MMA. Not to capoeira. Not, you, once in a while is okay, but you know, he like instead of jabbing, he throws like triple lindens and shit. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. Come on, bro. Uh, Alonzo Menafield, who was undefeated, he was a, a football. This guy's got a crazy story. He went to like seven different group homes, couldn't read till he was like 13, 14, got adopted by like a, a Christian minister from Nigeria who took him and his brother in. He learned how to play football. He almost made the NFL. And now he was undefeated as a fighter. And then he lost his last couple of ones. I think he lost to OSP, he got knocked out. But he's a great football player, great story, great yeah. guy. Uh, he's fighting William Knight. I don't, know, I don't know anything about William Knight. I, I got to look into that. Jessica Penne is back. Finally. Fuck. That girl got like banned for like nine years from Usada. And I don't think she was taking anything. I, I don't really? know. Really? I don't. She's so anal. And like, oh, she, 
I don't think she's not a cheater. Like she, something happened, but I don't think it was on purpose. Like what was her, what was her, what was her official uh, thing? What'd she say? She said, she didn't what? know what the fuck was going on. She's like took a smoothie and or something. I don't think she, she was trying to gain weight because she was 105. So she was taking some type of supplement, but it wasn't like, I don't know. I, I, Do you think I her trainer like, maybe put shit in there without telling her, which is, which is the line that a lot of fighters I take. don't know. I just know Jessica personally. And yeah. she, she's a pretty, on, she's a very honest person. Like, yeah. I mean, she's a very, to a, to a fault. She's, she's moody. She's like cold. <laughs> we went on a date before. Oh not, shit! Was, there we go. It was not a good match. It was not a good match. Uh, <laughs> but then, like, I she was on my show on uh, Oxygen Oxygen Channel. Like, I went out with a bunch of exes. Like, she did that for me. Like, she's cool. Like, she's like, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. To be a cool person. But she's man. Talk about like, she, she's like, she's like, I have resting bitch face. She's like resting bitch personality. Like, she's yeah. Like, that's that's her. But she's yeah. cool. Like. I, it's hard to describe. Like, she's a great friend. Uh, I feel like a lot of female fighters are, are like, not I'm married, it doesn't matter, but even when I wasn't married, they're, like, cool to hang out with. Yes. But uh, you talk about, like, dating, it's just a different, it's a different yeah. level. It's a different level. Yeah. Um, so she's fighting Hannah Goldie. It was also kind of a smoke show. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's what we got coming up. Uh, Bellator, April 2nd, Pitbull versus Sanchez. I don't even know which Pitbull is which, but they're both amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Neiman Gracie is J fighting Jason. Wait, wait, Bellator Di Diego Sanchez. Uh, Emmanuel Sanchez, who's really okay. God, I was like, Diego Sanchez is, still, is he still fighting? Jesus. He is. He's fight Diego Sanchez is fighting Cowboy. Oh, really? Yeah. I would actually yeah. like that fight. That's a good fight. What, for who? I mean, I just think it's a. It would be a fun fight to watch. Well, they train together, and yeah. Diego says he got the best of him, and he wants to fight him. But I don't know. That's a rough fight for Diego. I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to see Diego fight anymore. I, I don't want to see it. He he's lost he's lost nine rounds in a row. I mean, oh really? And some of them were ten A's. A lot yeah. of them were ten A's. I, and he's got this new trainer who's like a a guru who everyone says is insane. Who was like trying to who was like chasing around people with knives in the octagon. <laughs> and he has a school called the School of Self Awareness, but nobody's ever proved that he could actually fight i don't know the yeah. guy he, he hates so diego me. might be fighting on lsd is what you're saying which would be an awesome no, fight. i know people that have like taken like ayahuasca around him uh, you know and went on some retreats and stuff that's to me like the scariest the craziest part i knew a guy told me he that like mike tyson took uh took took ayahuasca uh with a bunch of uh shamans that had like a bad trip and they had to call him because he was friends with mike and he pulls up and there's like 40 shamans running for their lives from Mike Tyson. And like, <laughs> so they calm Tyson down. They're like running around the Malibu cliffs. Tyson's like, it's just like, I can't imagine. So, uh, yeah, yeah. But, I put, but I put Diego in there. It's like people I would not want to trip with. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God, for sure. I don't want to trip with anybody, but that's like, hey, what do you, what do you got coming up? Uh, show wise. What do I got coming up? I got Tempe in uh, uh, 8th of uh, Phoenix, like 7th, 8th of April. I'm going to be shooting SWAT this week. The nice. TV show SWAT. Fuck yeah. Playing a trucker. Wow. I get white trash. The rest of my life is just going to be fucking <laughs> trash. For, that's all I can get now. It's fine. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Most people so that's it. Nice. I will be at the House of Comedy in Arizona, in Scottsdale, this Thursday to Sunday. Uh, and then I'm in Tennessee in Chattanooga in April. And then I'm also in Boca at, uh, at the Boca Black Box Comedy Club. Uh, nice. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Bill, you're the best. Thanks, Sam. Bye.